uh, aren't always ready for. And the first one of those we're going to talk about is data migration. So when we get our new tool, it might, you might stop to think, well, I've got this great new tool. I'm going to be able to track all these things. Hey, why don't I take all of my old data and push it into my new system? It'll be great. I can have consolidated reporting for new projects and old projects, um, and it'll be great. Although sometimes, depending on your organization, you might not actually have a choice. You might have some um, data retention policies or requirements for your projects that you have to maintain. Either way, uh, be aware that that process of data migration can be surprisingly challenging and complex and time consuming because wherever that data is today, you're going to have to transform it, reconfigure it to meet the requirements of your new tool, whatever it is, and then get that import. And you're also going to have to add a quality check on there because you don't want to start pulling in a bunch of garbage into your brand new tool that you maybe have new ways of man man managing data. So generally speaking, we would really ask you to consider closely if you really need to bring in any legacy data, um, timesheets, old project plans, and things like that. It's just, it's better to start clean if you can possibly swing it than to start bringing in a lot of historical data. Um, this particularly goes for the idea of project plans. Uh, so just to be ready, even if you've got in-flight projects that you're going to migrate and vary the new, typical use cases, hey, we've got a bunch of Microsoft project uh, professional plans and we just want to import them. Well, some of the, as an example, some of the challenges you're going to run into there is that the schema of your PPM is probably much more advanced and sophisticated than whatever you're pulling out of a Microsoft project plan. So once you get it into the tool, you'll probably have to do some updates and transformation. Next, uh, you've got, if, if you're a sophisticated user of Microsoft Project, you have resources assigned to those. Well, those resources probably aren't going to line up to the uh, resource names that you have in your PPM. So you once you import them, you may not have the right resources assigned. You might not get any. And then if you decide you want to get those aligned to make sure the import is clean, that can be a lot of work and maybe you've got 20 project plans that you've got to do that too. So it's just a lot of work and a lot of trouble. So just be aware if you, if you're thinking of data migration, try to try to <laughs> rethink that if you can, uh, if you've got to have it, you've got to have it and just expect that it's, it's going to be some extra effort. The next category of costs that can kind of sneak up on you are process development costs. And, you know, we work, we come in with to a lot of clients and say, all right, we, we're going to, we're going to buy this PPM, we're going to implement it, it's going to be great. Uh, and we're going to have this great, let's say, project intake process, and we're going to have all this governance, we say, great, show me the process. And they say, I don't know, what, what do you usually do? Um, and this is, this, it's, it's very challenging because every organization is different in their needs. And so if you, if that's the situation, we have to say, okay, well, now we've got to stop and we have to now go, let's go spend some time understanding your processes, doing requirements gathering, uh, do some process development and business analysis to give you a good process to help you, uh, do your project intake. Now, very often, um, an organization already has an idea of what they want to do. So if you're one of those organizations that you know what you want, our recommendation is go through the process before you start engaging with your PPM and map out that process. Get your swim lanes and your visios or your use cases, however you want to document those requirements. Figure out all the processes that you want to put into the tool and map them out and have them ready. So when the supplier comes and says, all right, I'm ready to start configuring your processes. What are they? You can say, here you go. Let's walk through them. Now, very often, if you're implementing a PPM tool, it's because you're in a situation where you're saying, okay, I'm ready to take the next step to make my organization more mature. And maybe you're not sure what are the best practices for these kinds of processes or what's possible, you know, what are or other organizations doing? Then that's actually an ideal time to engage with an experienced PPM implementation partner to help give you that advice, to help um, learn you know, what, what are others in your industry doing, what are the most efficient ways to do this for our maturity level, and, um, and take advantage of that so that you can start off with a strong, a strong solution. 
And um, if you do that, I think that's a great way to get value, but just make sure that you are planning for that when you are planning for your, your budgeting and your estimation and make sure that your partner understands that that is a clear need of yours and that that's accounted for. And they will take the time that you need to help you develop those processes. Going on to the next one, let's talk about another cost you might not be thinking of. Um, and those are operational costs. It's a, these are usually SaaS platforms, so you might think, well, there's no operational costs involved. But you'll find that you, the, you, there are. <laughs> and in particular, you need to make sure that you're planning to have your op operational team ready to support that. So you're going to need to have people who understand how to configure it, how to manage users, answer questions and things like that. So you will have some operational obligations for a SaaS tool, even though you don't have to host it yourselves. So just something to think about um, from, a, from a planning perspective, that manpower. Related to that are our support costs. Um, which is another category that we can look at. Uh, and I think we already talked a little bit about this or what are the SLAs that you can get? Um, do I get my team trained? So th those kinds of costs can kind of sneak up on you if you suddenly find, well, I need to get a couple people trained and you have to start planning for taking them out of work, putting them into training uh, and paying for, for that kind of education. All right. Um, finally, there's one more category of hidden costs we want to hit you with and that is uh, training costs. So um, when you get your your new PPM tool ready to go, you're going to have to train your team members. And there are a couple things to consider is the best way to go is usually a train to trainer approach. So have your partner go ahead and, um, you know, give you train your trainer so you can carry that training forward to your team. Um, another way, if you want to save a little bit on this, and if your team is highly engaged in the implementation, they can develop the training themselves maybe with a little bit of help from your, your provider, so that can save you some cost. We also recommend that you record your trainings, and that will make it simpler to uh, support onboardings in the future. Um, either way, helping having a, we recommend having a strong training plan. Um, which will cut down on the retraining or re-education costs later, and it will help drive your adoption. 